Hey everyone, welcome to Advanced Exercise Physiology. Today we're going to discuss Chapter 11, the Acid-Base Balance During Exercise. The objectives of this chapter are as follows. 1. To define the terms acid, base, and pH. 2. To discuss the importance of acid-base regulation to exercise performance. 3. To list the principal intracellular and extracellular buffers. 4. To explain the role of respiration in the regulation of acid-base status during exercise. 5. To outline acid-base regulation during exercise. 6. To discuss the principal ways that hydrogen ions are produced during exercise. For those of you who are taking notes, this is an outline that reflects what we will cover in this chapter. To start off, we need to look at acid and bases. Acid is a molecule that can liberate a hydrogen proton. It increases the hydrogen proton concentration in a solution. Lactic acid is a strong acid. If you look at a base, a base is a molecule that is capable of combining with hydrogen proton. We see that bicarbonate is a strong base. If we look at pH, pH is the expression of the hydrogen proton concentration in a solution. It is expressed as the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion proton concentration, where pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen concentration. The pH of pure water is equal to 7.0. If we look at the pH of blood, the normal pH is 7.4 plus or minus 0 or 0 0.05. We see that in acidosis, the pH is less than 7.4, in an alkalosis, the pH is greater than 7.4. An abnormal pH can disrupt normal body function and affect performance. The survival range of a human is 6.8 to 7.8. Here we see a diagram of the pH scale, where we see acidosis, alkalosis, and the normal pH range within the survival range. In addition, this diagram looks more closely at acidosis and alkalosis where we see an accumulation of acids that would increase the concentration of hydrogen or we see the loss of an acid or the accumulation of a base that would decrease the concentration of hydrogen leading to alkalosis. Now if we look at the conditions and diseases that promote metabolic acidosis or alkalosis we see in metabolic acidosis a gain in the amount of acid in the body this can be the result of long-term starvation through the production of keto acids or from fat metabolism. We also see this in uncontrolled diabetes, where we, it results in diabetic ketoacidosis. And during metabolic alkalosis, we see the loss of acids from the body, which can result from severe vomiting or kidney disease. In summary, we see that acids are, acids are defined as molecules that can liberate hydrogen ions which increases the hydrogen ion concentration of an aqueous solution. We also see that bases are molecules that are capable of combining with hydrogen ions. The concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution is qualified by pH units. The pH of the solution is defined as the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now looking at the sources of hydrogen ions during exercise, we see that one is the production of carbon dioxide which is the end product of carbohydrate, fat, and protein metabolism. We also see that it comes from the production of lactic acid and lactate, which are the result of carbohydrate and fat metabolism as well. In addition, we see that this can come from ATP breakdown, which results in the release of the hydrogen ions. The diagram below represents the source of hydrogen ions due to the metabolic processes we just discussed. If we look at sports and exercise induced disturbances in muscle acid base balance, we see that sports lasting greater than 45 seconds can produce a significant amount of hydrogen ions. In many sports, risk of acid base balance is related to the effort of the competitor. One would be playing at 100% increases the risk. Also, a sprint to the finish in distance events increases risk. If we look at acid bases disturbances, we see that they can limit performances. They would also contribute to fatigue, and increasing blood buffering capacity may improve performance in athletes. 
Below on table 11.1, .1, we can look at the popular sports and the acid-base balance within each. In summary, high-intensity exercise results in a marked decrease in both muscle and blood pH. This exercise-induced decrease in muscle pH is due to multiple factors, including increased production of carbon dioxide, increased production of lactic acid and lactate, and release of hydrogen ion during the breakdown of ATP. Only moderate to high-intensity exercise of sports presents a threat to the acid-base balance disturbances during exercise. Now if we focus on the importance of the acid-base regulation during exercise, we see that heavy exercise results in the production of lactic acid. The increased hydrogen ion concentration can impair the performance. It inhibits enzymes in aerobic and anaerobic ATP production and it also hinders muscle contractile processes by competing with calcium for the binding sites of troponin. In summary, hydrogen ions can attach to the molecules and alter their original size and function. A failure to maintain the acid-base homeostasis during exercise can impair performance by inhibiting the metabolic pathways for the production of ATP or interfering with the contractile process of working muscle. So the body is needing an acid-base buffer system. If we look at those systems, we see that the acid-base balance is maintained by the buffers which release hydrogen ions when the pH is high or accept hydrogen ions when the pH is low. There are intracellular buffers such as proteins, phosphate groups, and bicarbonate as well as extracellular buffers such as bicarbonate, hemoglobin, and blood proteins. If we focus on the bicarbonate buffering system, we see that the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation will describe the ability of the bicarbonate carbonic acid to act as a buffer in this system. In addition to the bicarbonate buffering system, there are several other buffering systems listed in Table 11.2 below. Now if we look at the ingestion of sodium buffers and human performance, we see that some studies show improved performance by the ingestion of these sodium buffers. However, other studies show no improvement in performance. Some sodium buffers are sodium bicarbonate and sodium citrate, and these can increase the time to exhaustion during high intensity exercises at 80 to 120 percent of VO2 max. Some considerations for use, they can cause nausea and vomiting, especially with sodium bicarbonate. And in addition, large doses can cause actually alkalosis, and these may be banned in certain events. In summary, the body maintains an acid-base homeostasis by buffer control systems. A buffer resists pH change by removing hydrogen ions when the pH declines and by releasing hydrogen ions when the pH increases. The principal intracellular buffers are proteins, phosphate groups, and bicarbonate, while the primary extracellular buffers are bicarbonate, hemoglobin, and blood proteins. Now if we look at the respiratory influence on the acid-base balance, we see that the carbonic acid dissociation equation represents this. When the pH decreases, the hydrogen ion concentration increases, which leads to a reaction that moves to the left. The carbon dioxide is quote-unquote blown off by the lungs, which ultimately raises the pH. In summary, Respiratory control of the acid-base balance involves the regulation of blood and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. An increase in blood partial pressure of carbon dioxide lowers the pH, whereas a decrease in blood carbon dioxide actually increases pH. Now if we look at the regulation of the acid-base balance via the kidneys, we see that it is important in the long-term acid-base balance. However, it is not significant in the acid-base balance during exercise. We see that it also regulates the blood bicarbonate concentration so that when the blood pH decreases, a reduced rate of bicarbonate excretion is seen by the kidneys. However, when the blood pH increases, we see an increased rate of bicarbonate excretion. In summary, although the kidneys play an important role in the long-term regulation of acid-base balance, the kidneys are not significant in the regulation of the acid-base balance during exercise. 
Now, continuing with the regula regulation of acid-base balance, we want to look at this specifically during exercise. We see that the hydrogen ion production depends on exercise intensity, the amount of muscle mass involved, and the duration of exercise. We also see that the blood pH declines with increasing exercise intensity, and that the muscle pH declines more dramatically than the blood pH, where the muscles actually have a lower buffering capacity. These two charts represent the changes in the arterial blood and muscle pH during exercise. Continuing to look at the acid-base regulation during exercise, we see a buffering of hydrogen ions in the muscle. 60% of this occurs through intracellular proteins, while 20-30% to occurs by muscle bicarbonate. The remaining 10-20% to is done through intracellular phosphate groups. If we look at the buffering of lactic acid in the blood, however, we see that bicarbonate is the major buffer. The increases in the lactic acid is also accompanied by a decrease in bicarbonate and blood pH. Also, hemoglobin and blood proteins may play a minor role. The following charts represent the changes in blood lactic acid, bicarbonate, and pH during exercise respectively. In addition, the regulation of acid-base balances during exercise has a first line of defense which are cellular buffers such as the proteins, bicarbonate, and phosphate groups and the blood buffers which are the bicarbonate, hemoglobin, and proteins. But there's also a second line of defense which is the respiratory compensation or increased ventilation in response to an increased hydrogen ion concentration occurs. The following chart below shows the lines of defense against the pH change during intense exercise. In summary, figure 11.6 outlines the process of buffering exercise-induced acidosis. The first line of defense against exercise-produced hydrogen ions is the chemical buffer system of the intracellular compartment and the blood. These buffer systems act rapidly to convert strong acids into weak acids. In addition, intracellular buffering occurs with the aid of cellular proteins, bicarbonate, and phosphate groups. We also see that blood buffering of hydrogen ions occurs through bicarbonate, hemoglobin, and blood proteins, with bicarbonate playing the most important role. Finally, the second line of defense against the pH shift during exercise is respiratory compensation for the metabolic acidosis. That concludes the content for chapter 11, but I wanted to provide you with study questions to test your knowledge and to help you greater understand what we've just covered. Question 1. Define the terms acid, base, buffer, acidosis, alkalosis, and pH. 2. Graph the pH scale and label the pH values that represent the normal arterial and intracellular pHs. 3. List and briefly discuss the major resources of hydrogen ions produced in muscles during exercise. 4. Answer the question, why is the maintenance of the acid-base homeostasis important to physical performance? 5. Identify what are the principal intracellular and extracellular buffers. 6. Discuss the respiratory compensation for metabolic acidosis and answer the question, what would happen if the blood pH if an individual began to hyperventilate at rest and answer the question why. And seven, briefly outline how the body resists pH change during exercise. Include in your outline both the cellular and blood buffer systems. This concludes chapter 11 and the acid-base balance during exercise. Please reference your text or this lecture to have any questions or feel free to email me at any point. Thanks.